Hello and welcome to The Autistic Experience, a podcast with severe imposter syndrome. <laughs> My name is Kieran, as always, joined by Chloe. Hey. Hi. If you like this sort of thing, then you can listen to new episodes every Sunday at noon British time or 7 a.m. Eastern. <laughs> I don't know. I thought I'd put it in there. Fair enough. And you can go follow us on Instagram at The Autistic Experience. Now, yet again, we are diverting from our USP at the moment on the basis that, Chloe, you have your autism assessment next week. I do. On Tuesday. Tuesday. So we'll finally find out whether I've been lying this whole time or not. (laughs) Also known in our household as the Tismo Quizmo. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) So wish me luck because I'm going to feel super bad about doing this for so long if I am not, in fact, autistic. Yeah, so... uh, (laughs) Be a bit awkward. I mean, if you're not autistic, it begs the question what the hell you are. It's true. (laughs) Doesn't it? (laughs) The, The questioning goes, okay, if I'm not autistic... Then what is going on? Yeah, because something is. <laughs> Something's not right up there. <laughs> what is it? So, uh, with that in mind, what I thought we'd do today is start prepping you for it. Well, hey. I think we like more than a bit of preparation, apart from being left alone. <laughs> Feels like um, getting ready for a job interview. Mm. Super important. So what I found is on Attitude magazine, it's the autism test for adults. Mm. So again, this isn't technically a diagnostic thing. It's just a bit of fun. (laughs) But also, you know, if you are feeling you might be autistic, then it's a good starting point. I imagine that if you answer these questions in a certain way... It may suggest further investigation is a good idea. <laughs> yeah. But I haven't read this. No. So I wanna I wanna respond totally blind so there's no prep on my end. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's barely any prep on my end, that's why I've got a quiz. Yeah. <laughs> Still more than me. <laughs> okay, so all these questions, the answers are set for a scale of agreement. So it goes, very often is the highest level, then often, sometimes, rarely, and never. Okay. Okay, so what we can just do is do a one, two, three, four, five, five being most often, one being never. I'm glad you said it that okay. way around. I feel like as well, like, would you like me to kind of... Explain, yes. Yeah, so we... elaborate slightly on my answers. Yeah, we've got to fill out the runtime of the podcast. <laughs> okay. Otherwise, this would be a very quick <laughs> quick episode. <laughs> very not interesting, I imagine. So, first question. Oh, here we go. Is, have you always wanted a best friend, but never found one? Damn. <laughs> this might be the first uh, <laughs> example of Chloe going, oh, this this quiz is calling me out personally. This was that that was to like you started with a dagger straight to the the heart, didn't you? On I that think one, I know what we're going for that one. Then aren't we? it's a difficult one because I would say I have had times in my life where I've had best friends, but I just don't have them anymore, <laughs> um, or like I've grown distant from them. So it's a difficult one to to think of, really. I I think during this, what we can also do is if there are secret hidden meanings to some of these questions that I can uh, yeah. read, then how about we yeah. translate it into what the question is actually asking. So this is, well, rather than just going a singular best friend, how about we take it as like, have you always wanted a group of friends but never had that? Yeah, I mean, I'd say if we or, count it. Or like meaningful deep friendships yeah that's kind of where i was going that you know kind of meeting meeting a friend that you really sort of you feel like you kind of love like family almost and i would say let's go for four i don't want to go as high as five because i do have 
you know, a good friend from uni that I would say is like a brother <laughs> that I think will be around forever, but he's not here. <laughs> he's <laughs> on the other side of the country, so it's a bit of a difficult arrangement. Okay. <laughs> All right, question two. Now, there's an Americanism in this one, so I'm going to translate it. Oh, thank you. Did bullies target you in school? <laughs> what was the Americanism? Uh, grade school. Oh, uh, okay. Which I think it just specifies like pre-university because yeah. they still call colleges and universities school. Yeah, yeah. There. This is another hard one. I would say, I'd probably say four again on that one. I never felt bullied. I never felt picked on, but I definitely had some runnings with the kind of big bullies in my school year. I had a couple of times where I I got quite close to having a serious problem, I think, because of something I'd said or something I'd done. So I think I was kind of subtly picked on a little bit as well. So like not directly, but I remember a comment once of somebody making saying that I had nice eyebrows. They said like, oh, who does it? Where'd you get your eyebrows done? They're really nice. And like, we've seen pictures of what my eyebrows look like at school. They were not nice. I feel like that was probably a way of somebody trying to, you know, have a dig, <laughs> which I just didn't realise at the time. <laughs> so I'd say that's more how the bullies targeted me. So four. <laughs> All right, next question. Do you prefer to read non-fiction over fiction books? I mean, of course, the answer yeah. is it depends. On the whole, I think yes. I mean, I don't read that much, but I'd say, again, four, because I'm not very good at getting into a fiction story. I'm not good at visualising it and putting myself in it. It's just words. So if I'm reading something that is real and interesting knowledge, then that's just what it is. Do you know what I mean? And <laughs> I find it easy to understand. Are you always the first one to notice when a friend has gotten a haircut or made a small change to their appearance? Or change that to, do you notice quickly? I think so. I don't know whether you would agree, but I think so. I mean, we're biased because we cut each other's hair. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, I'm thinking like, I can tell when you've been out somewhere because like, I might come home and you might be wearing a different pair of trousers and or I will notice socks. that. <laughs> like, yeah, and it's a small thing. I'll immediately walk in and go, have you been out? Like straight away. Yeah, I'd say uh, maybe three on that one. I don't think I notice some stuff, but I notice other things. On for the next one. I've, I've already pre-answered this one for okay. you. Do you enjoy inventing your own words and expressions that might seem quirky to others? And I'd like to point out the phrase tismo quizmo. Is there uh, a number six? <laughs> I'm, I'm, well, I'm pressing this space where it should be, but it's not coming up. <laughs> I guess we're just going to have to go for five then. Yes. And that that is all. That, just that's yes. All. Yeah. There's many, many nicknames I have for things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Very weird. And I would never say them to anybody else outside <laughs> of this house. <laughs> okay, the next one will require a little bit of imagination. Oh, Lord. Because the question is, do you talk to friends at a party the same way you would talk to co-workers in the office? And the bits we need to imagine is going to a party and also <laughs> friends. working in an office. Yeah. Again, this is kind of biased because I know the way you talk to people you work with. It, again, it depends because there's a level of there's a level of friendship. There's like a line where if I'm friends with somebody and it's before that line, then yeah, I would talk to them at a party the same way that I would talk to people at work. But if they're past that line, then no, I probably wouldn't. But getting past that line is very uncommon <laughs> and very unlikely. Well, I think what this question is actually asking is, do you speak formally to your friends? I think that's what this is getting at. Or, you know, you talk to people you should probably have more of a professional relationship with in a too casual way. So it's about yeah. 
reading the room. Okay, and, like, yeah. Which tone of voice is appropriate or which language is appropriate. See, I didn't think about the other way of being too informal with people at work. Um, in that case, put me at like a five because <laughs> I'm very informal with the people I work with considering I regularly work with the owner of the business. <laughs> but also... I'm more formal with people I should be friends with than I need to be, I think. I will also <laughs> pre-answer this one. Uh-oh. Are you always bumping into things or tripping over your own feet? Yeah. Yeah. Five. Yeah. Again, there's no Not option six. for six. No. <laughs> that doesn't really need explaining. I'm very clumsy. Mm. And yes, yeah. that is all. <laughs> Gravity has different rules around you, doesn't it? Yeah. It does. And I end up getting myself into situations with things that you wouldn't even ever consider. Being physically being, possible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, next one. Do you have trouble understanding what people mean when they say they feel embarrassed for someone else? I feel like I understand what that means. Because it's like, if you see something embarrassing and you feel cringe about it, that's basically it, isn't it, really? And I can feel cringe about things that other people do, so I would say I would say I understand that one. Again, I think probably what the question is actually asking is do you have trouble understanding what people mean when they speak in kind of ambiguous language? Where they say something which could be interpreted in a couple of different ways. Do you have trouble like understanding from like their tone and context, what they actually mean. Yes, a lot. I think that's what that means. I don't know whether it is what that means, but... Well, that's what I'm I'm kind of reading. Rather, because th- these things don't come in like specific questions. They're there to look at broader themes. Yeah, I suppose, yeah. I mean, it could be like an empathy-related question. Maybe. But I, yes, I have a lot of trouble figuring out what somebody means if they're not clear with what they're saying, mm. <laughs> if it can have more than one interpretation. So do you want that as a four? Yeah. Okay. Do you prefer to play individual games and sports like golf, where everyone works for themselves, instead of team sports and games where everyone works towards a common goal? Um, Individual, yeah. Mm-hmm. But I, I prefer to play individual competitively (laughs) yeah well yeah so individual like pool badminton yeah that's what that means yeah okay so badminton counts as individual technically you do play competitively it's just boring it is yeah badminton counts as individual then because it's you versus somebody else yeah so tennis and that well it says where where everyone works for themselves okay yeah individual six hundred percent don't put me on no team I don't want to deal with other people's nonsense. (laughs) Okay, next one is, are you really, really good at a skill like maths or music, but struggled to succeed in other areas? Yeah, probably, but... Well, you've got a very sciencey mind. Yeah, I'm not very good at creative things. I'm not very good at art or drawing or kind of colour matching, anything like that. I can't really do, but... I'm pretty good at figuring out most things, so I'd say there's not a lot. This sounds horrible. I don't mean to sound like I'm full of myself, but I'd say there's not a lot that I find difficult. I can usually figure it out, which makes that hard one to answer. Yeah, but equally, when you're not good at something, you just quit instantly. Yeah, if I'm not good at something, I get annoyed. No, but I, the way I've always done it is if I'm not good at something, I get angry at it, but I keep going until I can do it. Otherwise, I'm not satisfied. And then as soon as I can do it, I never touch it again. So, I mean, I would say, I would say probably that one needs to be like a four or a five. Because, yeah, you know, I'm pretty geared towards like science and I'm very good at crocheting, I think. But I'm not so good at, you know. Well, your maths brain is very strange. Yeah, I don't like maths. I'm bad at maths. And I'm not good at, like, anything arty. 
I'm not very good at at all. And when I try and learn something new, which again, I think is probably what this is more talking about is like, I'm naturally better at some things than I am others. And when I'm not naturally good at it, it annoys me. <laughs> right, so I've put a four for that one. Yeah. Next one is, are expressions like curiosity killed the cat or don't count your chickens before they hatch odd to you? <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> I understand what they mean because I've been told what they mean, but I do find them a bit silly. And <laughs> I, do, I do quite like thinking about them literally. So maybe... Maybe like a five on that yeah, one. Yeah, I'd say so. Just because they're all strange, those yeah. like idioms and things. And I like never that. use them in my life, ever. So. No. Okay, next one. Even when you're in a quiet place, like the library, do you find yourself making involuntary noises, like clearing your throat over and over? Yes. Or like sighing. I do a lot of that. Sighing, clearing my throat, anything like that, really. I don't like being in silence, so I think I kind of make up for it by making little noises. Or if I'm with somebody else and it's silent like at work, then I'll sigh a lot. So maybe five. Yeah, because I'm thinking what this question is looking at is maybe vocal stims. Okay. Because if it's involuntary, then they tend to be like ticks or stims. Yeah. Yeah, well, I don't consciously clear my throat but i'm aware of doing it it's not like a need to it just happens <laughs> yeah or you you go <laughs> do i do that before you say stuff yeah <laughs> okay i didn't know that <laughs> cool <laughs> i have to edit out quite a lot of them i'll try and be more aware <laughs> in the future <laughs> well that's the thing about involuntary noises Anyway, next one should be an easy one. When you're having a conversation with someone, do you prefer to look at the wall, their shoes, or anywhere but directly into their eyes? Yeah. Oh, I just did it again. I heard that one. My lip smack. Yes. <laughs> Six. I hate eye contact. Mm -hmm. It's weird, especially with people I don't know. It makes me uncomfortable. I don't mind doing it with you, but basically anybody else. No, thanks. Yeah. There have been conversations where people like look at you and they're like, so tell me about yourself. I know. Staring. It's weird. And, like, and like, sometimes I feel rude because I might be, say, like serving somebody at work and I can easily go through the entire interaction without looking at them at all, or without looking at their eyes at all. I'll just look at the cheese, look at the till. And sometimes I'm, I kind of become aware of that and think, oh, this is bad. <laughs> I, should, I should be having some level of interaction with this person. But I don't want to. I don't like looking at people's eyes. It's weird. All right, next one. Think about your daily routine. <laughs> Would you say you follow the same schedule every day of the week and don't like unexpected events? Nope. Well, instead of unexpected events, think about like, the times where you've kind of had a bit of a meltdown over having to go into work on a day that you're not usually in work. Yeah, but that's more because I don't want to go to work. <laughs> but like, we can get up in the morning and not have plans for the day and then just go, oh, should we go here today? Yeah, okay. And that's fine. Like, I don't mind sort of being spontaneous on the day. I don't have to plan everything out. That's kind of, I think... Yeah, that's one of those ones ADHD gets in the way of. Yeah, because I don't plan everything in advance. I don't tend to do the same thing all the time, at the same time every day. The only remote schedule I follow is work because I'm usually in on the same days, but otherwise when I'm not at work, it's whatever yeah, I want to yeah, do yeah, at the it's, time. It's, it's the chaos. Yeah, basically. Chaos is in charge at that point. <laughs> so, okay, right. so what do you reckon? Maybe two? Yeah, I was thinking two. All right, next one is, do people say that you speak like a robot? No. It's a bit of a rude thing to say, isn't it? I think the opposite. Because it's a fairly classic thing of autistic people have fa having fairly monotonous voices. Yeah, no, I think it's the total opposite for me. Yeah. I would say like one. Yeah. Because in my life, I've had a lot of people tell me that my facial expressions and 
my voice are very expressive <laughs> and very like variable that my tone of voice is it changes quite a lot <laughs> i don't know whether you think that but that would require me listening <laughs> rude <laughs> i have been told that my voice it's like a woo you know it, it, it goes up and down all crazy <laughs> all right next one is is your memory like a steel trap even for facts that you don't fully understand no three on that one okay so sometimes yeah sometimes i'll remember things or like super clear yeah like well i think it's saying that like do you just remember random stuff for no particular reason sometimes <laughs> i do but sometimes i can read information and it doesn't get stored at all even if i try <laughs> so yeah it depends depends on what mood my brain's in Sometimes it can, sometimes it doesn't want information at all. <laughs> so we've got sometimes for that. Yes. All right, and then, oh, I think we're on the last question now. No, it's having so much fun. Do your family members lovingly... Oh, get rid Do your family members refer to you as the eccentric professor of the family? I mean, if they knew the word eccentric, they would. <laughs> I don't think six would necessarily cover this one. No, somewhere in the so, seven to eight range. Yeah, if we could go a bit higher. Yeah. <laughs> Can we just play our Joker and get like double score on this one? <laughs> I mean, it's just easily a five, isn't it? Really, yeah. like the number of times my family have said, like, "What are you?" Yeah, like that. I'm, I'm strange, or they don't understand, or like not in a bad way. You know, just like what planet are you on? What What are you doing? Why are you always doing these weird things? Well, those like... videos we dug out from your old camera. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> I think we should probably bring those to the Tismo Quizmo. Because <laughs> that would get you diagnosed very quickly. Yeah. In, in an affectionate way, yeah. As it says, like, lovingly. I've not ever been criticised by my family for being weird or being the eccentric. But they have said many times about how weird I am and how extreme I like to live <laughs> so yeah 10 10 out of 5 please okay so it says the higher the point total the greater the likelihood that you show signs of autism spectrum disorder <laughs> the, the higher the points the mm. higher the tism <laughs> yeah so uh, there's a Maximum score of 68. <sighs> Could they not have put one more point on it? I didn't make God's the sake. rules. <laughs> but your score out of 68 oh is 52. Okay. So it's. I thought it was going to be in the 60s for <laughs> the way that you were looking. So 52 means probably Tismo, yeah? Yeah, 76.47. Percent. That's that's a first that's a class. First, that's a first class autism. <laughs> I've done it again. <laughs> Fair enough. I can't say I would disagree with it. I don't suppose you've done this quiz, have you? I've not. No. You should have done it, so we could have. You should have said like, "Oh, this is my score, and I'm definitely okay, autistic." Give, well, all right, give me one minute. Okay. Right, let's run it. Oh, 61. All right, I forgot what mine was for a second. And 52. I was, like, I was like, oh, God, is that higher than mine or lower? <laughs> yeah. Okay, that's, that That makes me feel, I don't know. <laughs> Something. Yeah. But I, I, I think, it, I mean, there are only 10 questions in that. And as we're very well aware, autism screening questions tend to be geared much towards male psyches mm. from females. I think that was probably better than most of them. Because it had much more relatable contexts. Yeah. But even so, I think the trick for doing the the Tismo Quizmo <laughs> is, I think the thing is, you've got to basically try and not mask as much as you can. But I don't realise I am. Yeah, and that, that's the issue, I though. To? <laughs> that's the issue, and that's how it gets missed most of the times, because people are too good at masking. Yeah. Hence why I think probably it's useful either making notes or just going, have a look at this video <laughs> I made. 
Yeah. In the days before social media. Oh, God. Every test I've ever done, every Tismo Quizmo I've ever done has suggested the Tismo. So I'm not super surprised about my score and I will try and be as honest in my official Quizmo as I was in this mock Quizmo. <laughs> the Quizmock. Yeah. Quizmock. <laughs> The the Tismok Quizmog. <laughs> if I'm allowed to sit in, then I can always just shout over at you. Go, oh, what, what about this? What about that? Yeah. I don't even know what to expect from it. Like, um, I just I just don't know what's going to happen. Like, what am I going to be asked? Am I going to have... Am I going to have questions? Is it going to be a discussion? Am I going to get diagnosed? Like, what has happened? I don't know what's going to happen at all. Turn up with a PowerPoint. That's a short fire way to get diagnosed. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Here's an Excel spreadsheet of all the online tests I've done with my mm-hmm. average score overall to suggest how likely my autism is. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but then, like, there's the whole other thing of, like, I don't know if I want to get diagnosed as well, because, like, I do, because... It'd be nice to have the understanding, but then I'm aware of the kind of limitations that come with it, that if you disclose it for jobs and things, then it can cause problems. Well, only if you disclose it before. Maybe I could just jobs. live with it and not Once, once, tell once they've hired you, it doesn't matter. Then yeah, it's a protected true. characteristic. Okay. So I just don't tell anyone until I've got the job. That's yeah. the key. That's fine then. In that case... Bring it on. Bring it on. Bring on the quiz mill. Yeah. I'm going to smash it. I'm going to get 100%. <laughs> <laughs> been revising so damn hard for this quiz mill. <laughs> Would you believe that we've reached the end of the episode? Well, as far as this very scientific Whoa. method is concerned, congratulations, you tismich. <laughs> Figure out what that means in your own Thanks. time. Anyway, if you've been playing along at home, let us know how you did. See if you whether beat you, us. Yeah, whether you beat our scores. We'll do a leaderboard. <laughs> Who's the most tistic? Yeah. <laughs> Me going on to my call on Tuesday. It's like, hi Chloe, how are you? I think I'm tistic. <laughs> it's like, yes. <laughs> Tick. <laughs> we will hopefully have some updates for you next week maybe when yeah. the next episode comes out and if Kieran is doing it on his own next week then you know, you know why yeah. <laughs> if the podcast suddenly disappears from your feed you know why <laughs> just to warn you you can yeah. go follow the show on Instagram at the autistic experience and if you feel like leaving a nice rating and review then uh, do so so yeah we will see you next week I've been Kieran, she's been Chloe, and... Wishing you all free A Merry Christmas. Oh. <laughs> okay. What? What were you going to say? <laughs> Sending you all the free lunches. Oh, yeah. <laughs> also, Merry Tismas. We, 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 we wish you a Merry Tismas. <laughs> and a happy free lunch. Mm.